Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Click PLC Simple Conveyor Easy PLC. Now the Machine Simulator or MS is part of the Easy PLC software suite. It has many built-in machines that can be programmed. A Simple Conveyor is one of these machines. This is usually the starting point for learning about the Machine Simulator. This conveyor example will use two digital inputs and two digital outputs. A pallet will move back and forth on the conveyor. When the pallet is detected on each end, it will stop in reverse direction. If both motors are started at the same time, the motors will burn up. This will be demonstrated. The machine simulator will allow you as a programmer to make mistakes before trying your program in the physical world. Now the Click PLC uh, will be used to program this virtual uh, machine. Using the Click Plus PLC, we will connect the simulator to the simple conveyor machine. This is done using Modbus TCP, which is Ethernet for communications. And we'll use the five steps for programming development, so we'll show you how this is programmed. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link's been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there'll be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing that we do is we wanted to find the task that we have to do here. So let's go to our machine simulator. We'll hit start. And this is the uh, one that we're going to uh, look at. If we click on it, you will see that there actually describes exactly what the machine is supposed to be doing. And there is a demo mode that will show you the box moving back and forth on this conveyor. So let's just go start though. And we go into the start mode, we will actually see the actual unit machine here. And we can go view IO. And because this is a very simple machine, we'll just uh, manually show what has to be done. So if we hit the output here, it'll actually roll along, hit it again, and it will stop. And you can see it's in front of the sensor, so the photo sensor is now signaling. We can then reverse that direction. And when it gets to this sensor, it'll, the photo sensor will signal it, and we will actually let it go. And you can see that it will physically fall off the conveyor belt itself. Now, in this world, we can also um, move things around. So we can actually pick that up and we can actually put it back on the conveyor belt if we want and or else we can just throw it away. We can also restart the machine so that it starts right back from the beginning so we can start brand new once again. View the IO and again, move it back and forth. Stop and then reverse. Up here, you can see that we're a uh, flying camera right now. We can have a first person which means that we can actually move around the environment or we can automatically put a trip camera and it will automatically move around for us. So the other thing we can do is um, again, during the first person here, we can just uh, move around here into the environment. So let's just uh, go to the other side of the conveyor. And when we look at, you can see that we have two motors, these two motors here. And if we put, turn them both on at the same time, you can see they will start to smoke and eventually they will turn black. And now if I turn these both off and try to reverse or forward, it won't go anywhere because they have been destroyed. Again, turn them both on again, you can see they're, um, they will continue to smoke. And I will have to hit the reset again before I do anything else. So that gives us a good indication of exactly what has to be happening or what has to happen um, with defining the test. The next step is to define the inputs and outputs. And we've already we've basically done that by looking at the IO here. We have our two inputs or two outputs to control the conveyor belt going back and forth. And we have our two inputs to determine when it's at the end of the conveyor. Then the next step is develop the logical sequence of operation. So in our program, what we're going to do is actually move this conveyor belt over. Once it hits the sensor, we want to stop the movement. We want to start a timer, wait, we'll say half a second, and then move it back to the other direction. And at the other end, we want to do the same thing. So it will continuously go back and forth. 
Now to start that motion, what we want to do is pick up on a first scan flag of the PLC when it first powers up, and that will determine uh, which way we're going to go. So that is our logical sequence of operation. And the programmer has to know all the different um, things within the logic so we can program it in and make sure that it's going to function the way it's supposed to. So that's the first step was defining the task. Second is define the inputs and outputs. Third, develop a logical sequence of operation. Now fourth would be develop the click PLC program. So if we go to our click programming software, I have our program already uh, put into this unit. And you can see here, we have our first scan flag. When the first scan flag comes on, it will move the conveyor to the right. Then when we have a limit switch, which is X102, the right limit switch, or the right sensor switch, it will actually stop the conveyor moving to the left, reset that, and it will actually start a timer, and that timer times up for uh, 500 milliseconds or half a second. It activates this, and then we then move it to the right again. Then as we go to the left sensor, we'll hit the move to the right, it turns off and we wait for a time period to then set move to the left and that time period again is 500 milliseconds which is half a second then in order to try our simulation for both motors coming on and the smoke to happen then what we'll do is use c1 and we'll cause the motor malfunction and what we'll do is if it's moving to the right we set the left motor and if it's moving to the left we set the right motor so that is our program itself another couple of things that we need to do is determine what addresses so that our machine simulator can actually uh, control these io so if we go to the address picker and we will turn on display our modbus addresses because we'll be uh, communicating modbus for our x we're going to X101, which starts at Modbus address 33 and 34. So 33 and 34 will be our, our Modbus sensors. Our outputs, Y, Y101 and Y102 will be address 8225 and 8226. Is it okay? So they're the ones that we need to um, notice for our machine simulator. Next, what we'll do is take a look at our CPU and our COM port setup. And under our COM port setup, what we want to do is look at port number one, which is our Ethernet port. And we'll just look at setup. And under setup, what you'll notice is that we have a fixed IP address of 192.168.1.230. So that is going to be our IP address that we must enter into our machine simulator in order to simulate this project. Yeah. And what I'll do is we'll just close that down and we'll just hit OK. So that's all set up and it's good to have a static IP address all the time in a PLC in order for things that we want to communicate to, we'll always know where they are. Okay. And the other thing we need to do is take a look at our Modbus uh, TCP setup, which is right here. So Modbus TPT or Modbus TCP setup, port number one, our timeout, our retries, we'll just leave them all to the default. And then what we want to do is we want to enable our Modbus TCP server. Now this is enabled by default, but we just want to verify that that's okay. Next, what we can do is take a look at our physical hardware that we have. And our physical hardware, like we said, will be the Click Plus PLC. And what you'll notice is that we are actually communicating through our port number one that we just saw that we just set up. And But we could also go through our serial, which is our, our uh, Modbus uh, RTU. We could also go through that 
as well going back to the computer. So either way, or we could go through our Wi-Fi on this Click Plus PLC. So in this particular case, I actually have a physical um, PLC that I'm doing for the simulation. We could also use things like uh, our Do More Designer software, or we could actually use the Easy PLC uh, software that comes with the suite. We could also use the Productivity Suite simulator, which also will do Modbus uh, TCP communications to the uh, machine simulator. So several different options for us to choose. So once we have that, let's go back to our machine simulator and we have all the correct information now and we'll go uh, to the IO drivers. On our IO driver, we will select the Modbus driver because that's what we're going to be communicating to. And we'll configure that Modbus driver. You see here we can do our serial or in our case here, we're going to do the Modbus TCP IP. The address um, 192.168.1.230. Again, the default port is 502 for Modbus. Our digital inputs um, will be starting at address 8224. Remember it was 8225 and 8226. So everything's off, offset by one. And we have two of those inputs. Our digital outputs start at 32, because remember we wanted 33 and 34. So again, offset by one, we have two digital outputs. We'll just hit okay. And they come back here. Now we can physically grab this and drag it onto which one we want, or we can go to driver and automatically assign those inputs and outputs for us. Then we go exit and we can start driver and we can exit out of this uh, unit. Now, before we do that, let's just go back to the PLC. And what we'll do is we will just put, make this go into stop mode. So our logic is currently um, not running at all. So the two outputs are not set. So let's go back to our machine simulator. We will then do exit, start driver and exit. And what you'll notice is that now my driver is connected. We'll view our IO here. And then what we can do is we can go back to our software. And we will start this software. There we go. And now it started back to our machine simulator. And you can see now we are moving our oscillating back and forth on this unit. Now we can also go back to our software here and we will be able to call up our data view. And on our data view, we can actually wander through the IO of our PLC. We'll superimpose that over. There we go. And you can see it oscillating back and forth. Now, the other thing we have up here is our time speed. So we could actually change what the time looks like. So we can increase or slow things down, slow it down and make, make the box appear slower. Or if we want to speed up and you can see that it speeds it up. Now notice that goes past the sensor a little bit simply because this is a time-based rate. So it's going to take a little longer for that sensor uh, information to come into the PLC to actually do something. And as we said before, what we can do is we can, um, we could actually try turning this on and causing a fault in order to blow this up. Which is exactly what we're doing right now. And you can see that's what's happening right now. Let's turn that off. Let's actually turn both of them off now. And what we'll do is we will uh, reset our display or our machine. Once we reset our machine, what you'll notice is now that we go back to our driver 
our driver information is all there. We just hit uh, exit, start driver and exit. So we are connected again. Let's go back to our PLC. And when we do, we will we'll actually, let's just start, uh, we'll go back to the stop, first of all. And now we'll start back to our run again. And we see our IO or our machine operating as it should. We can actually speed up to three times. There we go. Just to watch that go back and forth. And as before, we can actually zoom around and watch our simple conveyor in action. So if you enjoyed this video, please, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.